All right, in video one of this series, we learned, we took an overview of what it is that we're doing with the strategy of creating video and optimizing it and then turning it into a blog post. Uh, part two video was how to upload into, upload into YouTube, where we talked about the title, the description, the tags. We talked about TubeBuddy, how to make your uh, video public or enlisted or private sharing on Twitter and Google, and we went. Uh, we looked at the checklist for a second, and I also showed you how to set up the defaults in your YouTube channel so that some of these things automatically show up for you, all right? So now we're at the point where we are um, going to, let's go ahead and do the custom thumbnail and we'll do that before we get to the cards and the end screens now that I'm thinking about it because that will try to go in order here. So now we're going to go create a custom thumbnail. Now what happens is by default, YouTube creates a thumbnail um, just randomly. Okay. You don't want to be using those, those defaults. Now here you can choose one of their three. Okay. You can go down here if you have TubeBuddy and you can um, actually create a uh, thumbnail here using their thumbnail generator. So you can choose a still frame from the video. So let's just say you, let's click that, a still frame from the video. You can play the video and you can find an optimal spot that has a screen here. Give that a second and see if it pops up. All right, so let's just say that's the spot I want. I can pause it and then I can click continue and then it will allow me to download and save that plus it'll default to the to the video's thumbnail. That's one way. Uh, you can also go to thumbnail generator and you can choose a solid color. And let's just say we're gonna go with uh, blue. Let's pick a blue here and we click choose and then click continue and now we can go in and add text and it could be something as simple as how to upload a video into YouTube. And then um, we can pick a color. Okay. And if we want it to be opaque or whatever we want it to be. The size. Okay, where is my... All right, add. There it is. Okay, and if that you don't like that, you can put spaces in it. Okay, you can center it by messing with these little lines here. There we go. You can drag it around. Okay, it could be as simple as that. That could be your thumbnail for everyone if you wanted to. You can also add an emoji. So you want some sort of emoji there. You can put that in there. So your whole playlist could be an emoji and a title that's appropriate. You can also use shapes. These would be arrows and stars and circles and things like that. Let's add the star. Okay. So you could do the star instead of the emoji, that type of thing. Um, or you can add, upload an image. Okay. So I'm going to put my face on every single one of them. So I'm going to put that there and there. Okay. So now all of my thumbnails in this playlist will look like this. There's lots of ways you can play with this. Okay. So as I said, this is a tube buddy feature. Okay. If you don't have tube buddy, what I like to do is I like to use Canva. Canva is a free software and they have upgraded options as well. I do have a paid upgrade option. And then let me tell you why there's a couple reasons. One is that they have a whole bunch of images here. If I go to search and I type something in like house, let's just say I'm doing something with house. They've got all kinds of images here and some are free and some are part of the premium account. So I have a premium account. So I get those for free as part of the premium account. Some of them are a buck. So if you don't have copyright free software, this is really cool for this type of thing. Okay, so that's one reason. Another reason I pay is I like this, uh, and this is another one I don't have an affiliate link for, I'm afraid, um, to give yet. But I also like my uploads can go in their own files. So if I go to uploads, you can see here I've got things I've purchased. I've got my genealogy file. I've got 
my real estate folder, computers, because I always do these computer screens for my thumbnails, couches and living rooms. This is a good one to show you actually for those real estate agents. Maps. And so let's just say I want to make a thumbnail for my real estate website and I've built a community page or I've done a video on Summerlin where I live, okay, on a particular community. One of the thumbnails I like to create on all these is I will I will do couches or blank living rooms and things like that. And I'll put a title on it like Summerlin, um, welcome to the vistas at Summerlin, something like that. And then I can go over here and I can choose um, an element and I'll find a box, a square. Watch this. I'll put this square on top of here and then I'll turn the square white and then I will shrink that down and then I'll put that behind I'll go up here to arrange and put that behind the text and now I can make that text pop out okay love this so much you can do it I always put a URL somewhere on there and I always put my logo so in this particular case I would go to uploads and I would go to logos and I'll find my black logo since we're going on a white lamp I'll shrink that baby down post it right here on top of this lamp and that way my logo is going on everything that I do, but it's it's always placed appropriately. It's not just stuck randomly on the page. It has a purpose. So I try to make it look like it's a part of the actual piece of furniture, okay? And then I'll put a URL down here, and this would be something like ballinvegas.com. Actually, I'm going to put that as part of the up here. I'm going to add a small line of text drag that over here. In fact, I'm going to make that smaller. Let's make it like a 10 and I'll put ballinvegas.com and I'll put that down here. Okay. So I'm like my thumbnail is going to take me less than five minutes usually. And I'm going to change the spacing on this a little bit. Whoops. I did not mean to put a bullet point on there. I meant to close that. Sp oh, I did it again. Close that spacing a little bit. There we go. All right, so there's a there that would be a thumbnail that I would use for a, a video. Okay, now I've already got one um, on my playlist here. Oh, I closed it out, didn't I? Okay, on this particular uh, video, I'm doing um, computer screens, computer screens with red coffee mugs, and they look kind of like this here. So every screen, every, every picture is going to be different with a different computer screen, but they're all going to have a red coffee mug. So I'm, I'm trying to find something to make it look like a theme that they all have something in common. And I'm using Shutterstock. I have a, um, software subscription. I have a subscription with Shutterstock so I can download all these, which makes it extra cool. So you could do all kinds of those living rooms, that couch one I get from Shutterstock. So if I go down here to a couch, that I just showed you. And I do have a link um, for Shutterstock. I'll put the link in there. So I'll find one that I like, like this, this one here. And that's now I would save that, upload it into Canva. And then I'd put that little background, put my logo on maybe one of those pillows, put the little thing on there. So everything would have a theme, right? So that entire playlist would all have maybe teal furniture or something like that. So just to give you an idea for finding a theme. You want all of your thumbnails to match when they're going in a playlist, to have some sort of a theme that they all have, okay? It could just all be couches, or it could all be pink walls, or it could all, you know, you want it to kind of have just a little theme to it, all right? Um, okay, so then um, we have created our custom thumbnail for our video with Canva, and next, um, oh, let's see, what am I doing here? Video tutorial, getting started with video. You know, let me go ahead and, um, let me go ahead and show you. I'll just do this real quick. So I'm going to go over here to uploads. Whoops. Let me go back to my template. So I'm, this is how I would start from scratch. Go back to Canva. I would find a template that I wanted to build on. That is something like what I'm doing right now. This one right here is. Okay. Then I would go up here to my uploads and I would go to uploads and I'd go to computers because I'm going to do that computer one with the red coffee mug. See all my themes? See how they're all a little bit different? All right, so let's just say I'm going to go with this one to start off with. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to get rid of this because that's not appropriate to this particular one. 
and I'm going to use a white logo. I just kind of drag off the, the elements I don't want off the screen. Okay. So I'm going to take whatever I called that YouTube video a second ago, this title here, and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back over to Canva and I'm going to paste that into that computer. Okay. Now, if it's too big, I can either take, put less words in the sentence or I can make the font smaller so that it fits. Don't need that. Video tutorial, getting started with video, how to create, optimize, and repurpose video content. Okay, now spacing, I can space that out a little bit. And I am going to, how to create, optimize, and repurpose video content. Video tutorial, drag that over. Let me start a video, how to create, optimize, repurpose video content. That is perfect. Now I'm going to go grab my logo. So I'm going to go up here to uploads and logos. I mean, find my white logo because that will look better on a red cup. Shrink that down. Put that over there on the mug. Oh, super cute. And then I like to put that little URL somewhere on there. So I'm going to go grab my text and I'm going to go to a small piece of text. Drag that down to where I want it. Mm, this one's a little tricky. Maybe right on top. Now, let me make, let's see. Um, RankLikeABoss.com. I'm going to make that smaller. I don't like that there. I'm going to make that even smaller and put it on the bottom. Those are a little tougher to find an exact spot for. I don't want them to be super obvious. I like it when there's a notepad or somewhere where it just kind of naturally fits and I'm not really finding it on this one. And I, I don't like it when I want the branding on there, but I don't want it conflicting with the image. I don't like it when it, when it conflicts with the image. So I'm going to put it right down there, I think. No, still too much text. I don't like it. And I won't always leave that on there, by the way. If it really doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, I'm just not going to. I don't like it on this picture. Okay. Um, so shrink that down a little bit. My logo's already on there anyway. There we go. Okay. So then I'm going to highlight this text again, and I'm going to click download. And I'm going to go to JPEG download and then oh by the way the reason I changed it from ping to JPEG is because a ping image is much too large to be using on your websites it will completely slow down your page load which is a which is really bad for customer experience for the search engine signals all of that so I will make them a JPEG and then I save these in my thumbnail folder title it you want the thumbnail to be titled whatever you're calling your video on your blog post. Consistency in your keywords. I'm going to click Save. Now I'm going to go back over to YouTube and I'm going to upload that. So I'm going to go down here to Custom Thumbnail. And I'm going to go down to my thumbnails and I'm going to click on, on there's the thumbnail, see it? And I'm going to open it. And there it is. Now, once I publish this, that will become the thumbnail. Also, this is downloadable later from once it's up on the YouTube list, you can actually download it. And this is the same picture we're going to use for our blog post. So repurposing content means using content more than one time. You're getting much more use out of it. Okay. Now, um, for right now, I, we're going to go in and do cards and end screens next. And I'm going to do this on the next video, but I'm going to go ahead and publish this now so that all of the changes that we made are actually done and I don't go messing anything up with my screens. This is typically how I do it. I'll go ahead and publish and then I'll add my end screens and my, um, my cards. Okay. So really quick. And as, as long as I'm doing it sequentially quickly, I don't mind doing it that way. If I, if I know I'm going to have to stall out or something, um, I, I want I just want to make sure this gets, gets published and I don't lose it for any reason. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to click publish. 
And then we will go on to the next video and we'll do our cards and end screens on that one.